starting for the first time in a regular season game at quarterback number 16, Jim Plunkett. In 1971, Jim Plunkett arrived in New England as a Heisman Trophy winning number one draft pick and thrived under the pressure. That first year, he took every snap of every game, earned Rookie of the Year honors, and led a previously woeful Patriot team back to respectability. He delivered probably beyond what he should have delivered as a rookie because the, it, the expectation the next year was even uh, higher and probably way too uh, difficult to meet. The second year, people took the Patriots serious. The son of two blind parents, Plunkett had overcome many obstacles, but none like those he would meet in subsequent seasons with the Patriots. <laughs> Behind a faulty line, he was often injured and constantly on the run. After five seasons, his time in New England came to an inglorious end. It was a little bit surprising to me the following offseason that they traded him. He had played decently for the Patriots, didn't have a real good supporting cast. And then when he was traded to San Francisco, they were down at the time and he got beaten around pretty good. In San Francisco, Plunkett's body was bruised and his once considerable skills appeared to be diminishing. Still, he never lost heart. The thing that Jim still maintained was that uh, incredible competitive desire. One of the greatest competitors. Uh, I refer to Jim as the Phoenix. He keeps rising. But first, Plunkett would hit an all-time low. He was cut by the 49ers and later joined the Raiders in an unaccustomed role as a backup. You know, I wasn't the starter for the first time in my life, just about. Uh, it was a tough time for me, uh, sitting behind other players and watching them play week after week and me sitting on the bench. It was, it was no fun, believe me. We had all seen Plunkett play in college. We had always liked what he stood for, the toughness. You could see that when the time came, there would be an explosion of greatness if he got the opportunity. That opportunity came in 1980 when injuries forced Plunkett into the starting lineup midway through the season. In a remarkable run, the once struggling Raiders became a playoff contender, winning nine of 11 games, with Plunkett regaining his old form each step of the way. As he got his physical and mental strength back, you could see that there was something special. And our football team could feel it. He had a lot of what Kenny Stabler had, the ability to make other people play better. The ability to get his teammates to be willing to lay their lives down. He was just nonchalant. He just thought that was the way it should be. We'll just beat him, whatever we have to do. We'll... And that's what the great ones have. The great ones have that sense of, we know what we have to do. We'll just go out and do it. Plunkett's magical 1980 season concluded in Super Bowl 15 with an MVP performance as the Raiders became the first and still only wildcard team to win it all. And Puckett opens up the bag of tricks. It was uh, kind of a vindication, uh, satisfaction after being in the NFL for 10 years, uh, almost being out of football. A lot of people had given up on me. I mean, it was a fantastic year, uh, to say the least. Plunkett had triumphed over the odds, but he wasn't through. He survived injuries and several benchings to lead the Raiders to another championship in Super Bowl 18. Yet despite his accomplishments, his name is seldom mentioned in discussions of the NFL's all-time great quarterbacks. I feel kind of left out and slighted. Uh, I wish my career had gone on a, on a slightly upscale uh, course the whole, entire way, but you know, life's not that way. It's a long learning process. Plunkett's willingness to stick out the tough times earned him respect wherever he played. I just love him, and he was just uh, a guy with uh, power and courage. And he had the most natural throwing arm motion that I have ever seen in a quarterback, and that includes today. I think Jim Plunkett in his prime was as good a pure passer as a game of it has ever seen. 
People today in New England come up to me all the time if they happen to, to recognize and they will say, you know, Jim Plunkett never got a fair shake in Boston. You know, it's just a shame he didn't stay. And I think if you took a poll now, uh, and, you know, people over time realized what a real asset he had been. In the end, Jim Plunkett's power of perseverance was also an asset to the game itself.